Hello, everybody. Mm, I've got a bug in my throat. Excuse me. <coughs> so welcome. Uh, my name is Julie Faye Fan Balzer. If you're new here, this is Book Club, and we are on week four of The Artist's Way. So I had kind of an epiphany at breakfast this morning. I was talking to my husband um, about the book. And during our conversation, I realized that one of the issues is I came to this book with kind of idle curiosity. That's the way that I would put it. Like, I just was like, oh, everybody talks about this book. Let's let's see what it's like. And so I just kind of showed up. Um, but I think a lot of people who pick up self-help books are looking to solve a particular problem. And a lot of times when you're looking to solve a particular problem, you find solutions because you're looking for them. And so I thought maybe one of the reasons I'm annoyed by this is because I'm not looking to solve a particular problem. So I thought, I need to find a particular problem to solve. So I haven't done that yet because I just thought of it this morning. Um, but that I think is one of the things I'm going to carry into uh, week five, which is what is the problem that I want to solve? Because then I think I'll get more out of it. So all of that said, I hope that you will pop in to the chat. Um, if you're interested in taking an online art class with me, I have a new live in uh, class that's going to be going up on Zoom about making collage faces that's done over three days. Um, and I have a huge back catalog of lots of different classes, including a monthly membership, which starts at just $5.99. So I hope you will check all of that out. So without any further ado, let's jump into this week's vlog and see how I did with week four, because I want to hear all about how you did with week four too. Chapter four, here we go. This is recovering a sense of integrity. I'm really curious to find out what she means by integrity because it can mean a lot of different things. So maybe this is a generational change or I don't know. But one of the great things that happened in the 30 years since The Artist's Way was originally published is that there has been a focus, especially recently, on mental health. And so this first paragraph of the chapter is all about, you know, how we say, oh, we feel okay, you know, about your dad's death, your job loss, whatever, even though you don't. Um, but we don't do that anymore. Like, I, I feel like people don't, I mean, you cover up to a certain extent, because why would you be an open wound to every, you know, Tom, Dick, and Harry in the world? But we, I think... I think as a society, right, we're more accepting that people are allowed to, like, have feelings. So that's great. So this is very reminiscent of um, Chapter 2, and I love it, which is, people frequently believe that creative life is grounded in fantasy. The more difficult truth is that creativity is grounded in reality. In the particular, the focused, the well-observed, or specifically imagined. True. This all of these paintings, that face, these sort of abstract that's over it, the flowers behind it, like, I can draw a face because I looked at tons of faces and I've studied them and I've carefully observed them. I can draw flowers because I've observed and practiced tons of flowers. I can draw an abstract because I've studied carefully, like, how things overlap, which colors work together, which ones don't. You know, it's, it is about careful observation, 100%. I promised myself I wasn't going to talk about God anymore. But I really like this line. She says, when we have engaged the creator within to heal us, many changes and shifts in our attitudes begin to occur. I like that phrase, the creator within. Because that to me is about like your inner child, your inner self, listening to your body, like being in touch with who you are, and that, you know, you shouldn't be at war with yourself. And you should, I mean, I just, I like the idea of sort of an, a, the creator within. I like that a lot. That one works for me. I can't get behind this. Reading deprivation. So you're supposed to not read this week a sort of a way of um, being with yourself and letting things out and the idea, right, that like you're, there's too much input um, from the world. 
This is my own prejudice. If brilliant creativity came from the minds of those who didn't read, I think there'd be a lot more brilliant people out in the world there. I don't think that reading is the problem. Now this is a pre-internet time, so I can agree with people say all the time about like go on a social media diet, you know, but I don't, uh, I just don't think knowledge is the problem. I mean, they've proven over and over that um, some of the biggest readers are CEOs of major companies that, you know, I, I just, ooh, I'm having trouble. Reading is good. So let's get to the underlying part, right? She's trying to tell you not to read. Why? Why, 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 why? And I think it is back to what I just said about like, I think she just wants you to have your own thoughts. She keeps talking about how by being by yourself is the most important thing and having only your own thoughts and stuff. And I'm pretty sure I can read and still have my own thoughts. In fact, I'm reading right now and having my own thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so this week we're supposed to do an extended artist date plan a small vacation for yourself one weekend day get ready to execute it so sorry steve you gotta take care of the baby all day i'm just gonna you know go off by myself hope that's fun for you if i may be frank i'd like to throw this book in the trash but I'm not going to. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to keep going. And I'm not going to think the negative things about Julia Cameron that I'm thinking right now. So towards my original question of what does Julia Cameron mean by integrity when she says recovering a sense of integrity, I don't think she's very clear about what she means by integrity. I think integrity means not reading. I don't know. I don't know. If anybody knows, tell me. So this week, uh, inspired by several comments in last week's live stream, I'm going to do evening pages. I'm going to put my notebook by my bed and I'm going to try to do uh, 15 minutes, however many pages that gets me, right before bed. Just brain dump. We'll see how it goes. Julie, after dark. Uh, so I'm here going to do my morning pages evening pages um will my mind be clear will i fall asleep right away so many questions okay so for my artist date i'm going to eat breakfast by myself in a restaurant i know that that sounds silly but it's one of the things i'm I've always, I don't like eating by myself in a restaurant. And when I travel, I must always eat in my hotel room because I don't like to eat in by myself. But I feel like artist dates are about doing things. So here I am outside this stupid diner where plenty of people eat by themselves and I'm nervous. Great. I um, eavesdropped on some conversations. So it was great. I eavesdropped on some conversations. I really like enjoyed my food. I had a little um, research done on the computer. Sort of, I've been um, working on a new class and thinking a lot about the artistic practice because of this book. And anyway. It was really good. It was like a nice reset. I don't know why I don't take myself out to breakfast by myself once a week. I had a perfect private table. I didn't feel awkward. I'm gonna count this as a win. So mom and I are here and she was, we were talking about how book club's coming up and I was saying, she was saying like, basically, well, you can say what you were saying. You were saying, stop talking about- Enough with the God, enough with the morning pages. And what I said is, there's not a lot else to the program other than that. And like anything you read, mostly talks about the morning pages, right? And the artist data is like the two major activities. There are some questions every week, but that's kind of the cornerstone of how it works. Beyond it to figure out something that would work for you in the same way that those things worked for her. Well, I think that is what I'm doing. Like, I think that's like, I, cause I was saying like, I don't think the nighttime stuff is working for me. Okay. 
It's so, not about the time of day, I don't think. Well, actually, she says it's very I much about the time of it's day. It's not about the time of day. It's about finding a time that fits in your life for you to have a regular habit of meditating through doing art. Right. And so I think that that's going to end up being, this is a 12 week program. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And I think what's going to end up happening, we're going into week four. Yes. Or we're in week four. Are we in week yes. four? Okay. We're in week four. I have the hiccups. Pardon me. And, um, I think that what's going to end up happening is I probably will end up turning it to art, which is sort of what I thought anyway, but you never know. We'll see how it goes. Um, well, I admit I haven't read the book. Is it about creativity or is it specifically about art? It's about creativity and it says it's basic. I mean, she's a writer. So for all intents and purposes, as far as I can tell, it's mostly about being a writer. And then I think it has worked for other kinds of artists, but it doesn't seem to like, it's more about connecting with like, your creative child. Oh, cutting off my face. I'm busy talking instead of holding this phone. I'm it's like you, connecting with having, your creative child. Read the book, yeah. Here's what, what I've gleaned from the conversation. She's actually kind of a loner. She hasn't felt supported, but she doesn't necessarily, in my opinion, reach mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. So she's found a way that works for her where she's using writing to have a friend and she's using uh, uh, God to have a friend. And I think if you look at that and ask yourself, maybe is this encouraging you to build up more of a creative circle? Yeah, because of friends I have to find say, a way to do it. And so, sometimes maybe even a phone call, a scheduled phone call with one of your is a way of reaching out. But she doesn't talk about community, which is actually something I've mentioned to you, which yes. is community is really important to me as an artist. But not to her. But not to her. And I, I thought it was interesting because somebody pointed out to me that uh, there is an artist way for children, which is really like it's an artist way for parents of like how to make your kid more creative kind of. Um, and so it's basically the artist way. But the idea is like you involve your child in your artist date and this and that. And I was like, that's so interesting that it's okay to go with your child, who's obviously influenced by your opinion about stuff. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Interesting. Anyway. I also feel like the idea of make your child be creative. I don't like that phrasing. It's like. Well, that was my phrasing, to okay. be fair. To be fair. I feel like it, just if you don't interfere with the kid's creativity, mm -hmm. if the kid, if kid is being creative with mud puddles, okay, do Great. mud puddles. So as a side note, if you like this level of bickering with my mother, then check out our podcast. There's so much more. <laughs> so much more bickering to be had okay so let's do a quick check-in um how many days did i do my artist pages i think i averaged about the same like four days maybe they're by my bed my notebook's by the bed the book is by the bed as well um because i like referring back to it as i'm doing my pages and i would say There were things I liked about doing it at night, but the problem is like the rhythm that my husband and I are in, you know, we get in bed, we talk, we maybe watch a show and then go to sleep, right? And so the problem is, so then I do the pages, like I come to bed early, but then like he, his, um, his office is on the second floor. So he like hears me come down the stairs and then he wants to like talk, which is great because I love my husband and I'm happy to talk to him, but I have to be like, go away. I'm doing this. Uh, so it was just awkward and kind of weird. And then I, and then I was like, well, maybe after like we watch a show or something, I'll just go in the bathroom and do it. But then that's also weird. You're sitting in the bathroom doing your morning pages. Anyway, whatever. So that didn't work. So going forward this next week preview, I think I'm going to go with art uh, and see if that does a little bit better and I can make the morning pages work for me. Um, Art Estate did it, loved it. And actually I went to a gallery, uh, my mom and I went gallery hopping. So it wasn't an Art Estate, but it was something I haven't done in a while. So that was great. It felt great to get out into the art world. Um, as far as like any other like things that came up, I had two meetings with gallerists this week and really conflicting information from them. And I think that's rattling around my head right now in terms of sort of like everything that I'm thinking about. Um, 
and I did write about it actually in my evening pages, just sort of thinking about it, but I'm processing right now and um, we'll see how that turns out. And I almost forgot because I don't have the book in front of me because it's downstairs by my bed, but the final checking in question I think I recall is about the reading and nope. Nope, I read a lot. I read a lot of news articles. I read an entire novel this week. I, uh, yeah, I did some reading. Okay, so, so many good comments. I want to mention just really quickly, because it's on my mind, like, why, why am I still doing this book? Uh, and I think there are a couple reasons, which is one, I do really believe that it is important to push through things that are uncomfortable. I think you can complain the entire way. Like, I think if you're on a five mile hike and you want to whine about it the entire time, but you're determined to finish the hike, great. Like, if that's what helps you get through it, great. So I think, like, I need to, like, point out the things that I don't like along the way, but I'm still committed to seeing if anything happens at the end of 12 weeks. The time it takes, you know, to read this chapter is minimal. The morning pages are more time consuming. The artist date, I genuinely really enjoy. In fact, I wrote a blog post yesterday about how it really was reminding me that, you know, I used to go to museums once a week and now I just don't since having a baby and since the pandemic, which both kind of happened at the same time for me. Um, so that's, I think why I personally am sticking with it because I just want to see what happens at the end of 12 weeks. I'm still going to be here if nothing changes. Okay. If I'm 1% better, great. You know, and I want to think specifically about what it is I want to get from this. Cause I think that'll really help too. Okay. So let's cruise through the comments and see what people have to say. There are other people like Carol who also felt the reading deprivation deprivation was kind of a WTF moment. Uh, and I do, I get the point of it in terms of like not doing things that distract you from being with yourself, because I think I finally understand, although I didn't in the video, but I do now that recovering a sense of integrity is not like, um, the idea of like, do you have integrity? Are you a good person? But integrity, like, right, like, like who you are, who you are without the outside stimulus, who you want to be. And, and I think that because a lot of the exercises this week, so one of the major exercises this week was called buried dreams, buried dreams and exercise. You have to list five hobbies that sound fun, five classes that sound fun, five things you personally would never do that sound fun. Five, by the way, if they sound fun, why would you never do that? I don't know. Anyway, five skills that would be fun to have, five things you used to enjoy doing, and five silly things you would like to try once. So again, that's all about like integrity, who you are, who your like real self is. So I think I think that's what it's about. Um, Diane says she can't imagine a week without reading. I read every day. Me too. I just don't know. I don't know. Um, analysis paralysis. I get that all the time. That is true. And when Donna makes a good point, she says, you are allowed to read the book. That's true too. So Sherry says for her all day artist state, she's heading to the beach and that sounds fantastic. Um, and I will say like, I think that of course I could tell Steve that I'm, you know, going to disappear for a day to do something. I just feel like I like to spend time with my family. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not in the right season for taking a full day to myself that way. Um, Sherry has a good point. She says, remember your 1% learning. Thank you. Thank you. I do need to keep that in mind at all times. Carol says, Cameron even mentions doing an evening pages to clear the mind. Absolutely. Uh, Jody suggests checking the book hundred percent. She's read the back half of the book. So she's got an idea what it's about. Um, Donna's wondering what the back half of the book, if it brings something new to the table. And that's actually a question that I had too, because I've noticed that it seems like we're doing the same exercises kind of over and over again. And I'm trying to think, because again, I like to look into the engine and figure out if I can like figure out what the underlying part is, what the structure of it is. And so just doing these same things, retreading these same things over and over, do something. Is there a magical thing about staying with it for 12 weeks as opposed to like popping in? Is there, is there something about that? And I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't know. But I'm hoping to find that out. Uh, Sherry mentions that my mom is a real straight shooter, and that's 100% true, for better or for worse for me. Uh, she's always told me the truth. When I was a theatrical director, I could trust my mother uh, when I said, so what did you think, to say that was terrible if she didn't like it, uh, or that was great if she did, and then it really meant something when she said it. Uh, Jody points out that life is just too short to force yourself to finish something that isn't working. What I gleaned from the last half of the book was not worth the effort for her personally. Absolutely. And I agree with that. I've always said like, chuck the book, chuck the magazine, don't stick with it if you don't want to. And I do agree that you're welcome to quit anything that you want. So true. Uh, oh, so this was one of the tasks this week was to get rid of the low esteem outfit. And she says it's irrelevant. Too many stories, not enough help. Yeah. I mean, I think that's another question, which is be, part of what this book is, is like testaments, almost like uh, testimonials kind of from other people, like how it's worked for, for them. Uh, and so that's great. And I think it's important to know that like, this is not um, a bunch of hoodoo, so to speak, but it's actually something that has, uh, has really worked for other people. But again, like if you don't have lowest self-esteem outfits in your closet, then that's obviously not going to speak to you in any way, shape or form. Um, Carol makes a really good point. She says, even if the book is not worth the effort for you, this conversation definitely is. And this is such a key point, Carol, for me, because like I said, in my vlog this week, community is like a key to my happiness. I feel like it's part of my art practice. I like doing things with other people. I love hearing other people's opinions. I look forward to this chat every week so much because I feel like I love having the chance of like that exchange of information, you know? And so I feel a little bit, mm, I don't know. I feel a little bit surprised that so much of this book is about being by yourself and so little about finding others in a community, particularly because like AA, which I think this is very based on, is very much about community. Um, so I don't know. That's a really interesting question that I have. Um, Kathleen points out, she says, I think her direction to not be reading for a week is comparable now to not be scrolling online for a week to challenge your usual habits to numb out or go outside yourself to spend time. 100%. I think that too. Uh, I think that scrolling and reading to me are two totally different things, although reading is involved in scrolling. But yes, absolutely. Break from TikTok. Um, Nancy points out it all goes back for Julia as a divorced recovering alcoholic individual. And I think you always have to remember that that's true, too. Like, I always say this as a teacher. Uh, listen, fantastic teacher. And I'm not ashamed to scream that from the rafters, but I am not the right teacher for everyone because the way that I teach and the things that I teach are based on the way that my brain works. They're based on a really intellectual approach. They're based on you having to do a lot of work, you know, with what I give you instead of me sort of spoon feeding you what you want. And if spoon feeding is what you want, like I'm just, I'm not the right teacher for you. Right. And that's fine. It doesn't mean I'm a bad teacher. It just means I'm not the right teacher for you. So I would say it doesn't mean that Julia Cameron's, you know, book is bad or anything because it doesn't resonate for me. It just means she's not the right, you know, guru or whatever for me. And she might be for somebody else, right? Um, Donna said something that I absolutely love. She said, we can all waste less time, but don't determine what you think is a waste of time for me. And I agree. This would be, it would be a much better generalized way if she said, there's something you do that wastes time. There's something you do every day that wastes time. What is it? Find it, figure it out, and just stop doing it for a week and see what happens. Is it reading? Is it, you know, uh, or, you know, scrolling? And it's not even maybe waste time, but because some of that time can be like meditative. But is there something you do that's like a thing that you do to sort of numb out? Is it listening to the radio or a podcast instead of just being with your artwork? Is it having the TV on in the background because you need the distraction and so you don't have the sort of alone time to process? I think there are a lot of things that all of us do that are like that. I once read that um, one of the things that we all need is moments of silence because you can't process your thoughts except in moments of silence. And you may have noticed that because sometimes if it's really quiet, 
you start to think about things you don't want to think about. And so then you turn on something to distract yourself from it. Again, a radio, a TV or whatever. And so I do think that there is a lot of merit to the idea of like not distracting yourself and being with yourself, but I don't necessarily feel like that's what she said here, but I do think it could be part of the underlying premise right there. Um, Jody points out, I get more from a conversation with my husband than I got from trying morning pages. And I feel, I feel very much like this. I feel like a chat with a good friend, with my husband, with my mom, with my best friend. Like I, I feel like motivated and excited and it helps me to process partially because it's, they let me just sort of talk at them the way that morning pages are, but they also kind of will say things that shift me, that change me. Like this will be a shock to everyone who knows me. Uh, I'm a little hot headed, and I tend to go off uh, you know, in like a direction. And like, it has been very useful for people to say to me, like, slow down, slow your roll there. You know, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? And I, you know, I'm also a thoughtful person. So then given the time to sort of slow down and think about it, it helps to have somebody else sort of redirect me. That's a personal thing. Uh, okay. So Kathleen says for me, the morning pages work because when I run out of things to write, but keep the pen going, more surprising things come out. Things I'm not consciously thinking of, but things that are mulling inside. I think that's fantastic there. Uh, I think I've brought this up before, but one of my, um, favorite movies is finding Forrester. And in that movie, one of the things that happens is the older writer says to the younger writer, start copying one of my stories. And then before you know it, because, you know, you're staring at a blank page and it's scary. But before you know it, like your own words will start to come out. Right. And I've said this about art all the time. Like, don't worry about like making art. Just start splashing stuff around. And the act of making will get you into the rhythm of something new. And so I think this is absolutely true. I think the reason that morning pages work is because they just get you in the act of spilling. And before you know it, you've tipped past the obvious into something more interesting. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. Um, by chance, did you notice the appendix trail mix in which the topic of a sacred circle is introduced Would this count as creating community? Absolutely. And I did because I read there's a section on like if you want to do the artist way in a group, which I looked up before I actually read that before I read any of the book because I wanted to make sure that I was kind of on track with this. So you can see I even have a pink marker on it. Creative clusters guide. Right. Because I remember one of the things she said is that there really shouldn't be a leader. And she talks about all of this, you know, how to do it. Avoid self-appointed gurus. Listen, use a 12 week process with a weekly gathering of two to three hours. Uh, respect one another, expect change in the group makeup. So it says many people will, some will not fulfill the 12 week process. And it goes on, be autonomous, be self-loving. And it sort of goes on and, um, you know, talks about it. This is, but I thought this was an interesting thing here, which it says, I cannot state emphatically enough that the artist way fame and path should not be used in ways that differ substantially from the artist way techniques as spelled out in the book. I ask that you refrain from presenting yourselves publicly as artist way experts, though you may use the book within your practice. Uh, anyway, so and then this is a word to therapeutic clients. Please remember that the book itself remains the primary source of the artist way teachings and that it is your interpretation and your work within the books and the tools that are central in your recovery. Um, anyway. I just think it's it's interesting because she does know that people do have creative clusters. Um, and then the next part is about the sacred circle, which Estella was mentioning as well. So I do think that like these are absolutely there are some group things that have sprung up around the book. And that's wonderful. But yes, community, 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 in my opinion. Um, so. Her not reading anything activity made me realize that I was using YouTube too much. I was watching others make their art instead of doing the art myself. That's fantastic. I'm so glad. Bonnie has the beginning of a thought, and I'll look to see if I can finish it at all. Uh, there you go. Taking what is useful and leaving the rest. I leave a lot out, but I've always enjoyed certain parts of Cameron's work. Absolutely. Um... 
I too have a great reader and can't imagine having a day go by without reading. Uh, Nancy says, jumping out of a plane sounds fun to me, but won't do it after having a broken hip. I can't imagine why you would jump out of a perfectly good plane. I know people do, but not me. I don't, that doesn't, that sounds terrifyingly horrible to me. Uh, but that sounds great, Nancy. Let's see. Uh, I'm really, there is productive reading for learning enjoyment and non-productive reading to avoid things or bury my head in the sand. I do both. That's a fantastic discovery, Diane. And I think that's probably true. There's productive scrolling. Like Pinterest can be useful. It can also be a time suck. Instagram can be useful. It can also be a time suck. I've gotten so much news out of TikTok that like the major media outlets haven't covered, like about the riots in France and all sorts of other stuff uh, out of TikTok. But there's also a time suck there too, you know? So I think it's both. And like YouTube is so great. When anything in my house is broken, YouTube. Uh, okay. Yes, we've built a community community. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yes, and you've got to remember she didn't have internet or Zoom, which is totally different. Um, the book is based uh, on 30 years ago. In the last three to four years, you've all gotten good at being alone, maybe too good. That is such an interesting point, Bonnie. And I have never even thought about that. But yeah, COVID made me more aware of how important community is. I think I sort of knew it, but took it for granted. It's not the truth. Like anytime you're used to something, you take it for granted. But as soon as it's um, taken away, you're like, wait, that was really important to me. Absolutely. I think this book was Cameron's Therapy and maybe it will help others. I think it has helped, you know, thousands of people across the world. So absolutely. Um, I think, for example, it can be very easy to get distracted by watching videos or joining live streams or scrolling for ideas, convincing yourself it's learning research instead of actually arting. Yeah. And I think, I think that part of the thing that I always like think about is, is what I, is that, am I actually learning? And if I'm learning, like, what am I taking away from it versus am I just enjoying it for entertainment? And I think entertainment is a perfectly fine thing. Like every human being needs some entertainment in their lives. You're not like a drone, right? You need, you need some entertainment. Um, but I think like being aware of and being clear that like, oh, this I'm just watching for entertainment and this is for learning. And what does it mean when it's for learning? For me personally, and it doesn't have to be the same for anybody, but when it's for learning, like I've got a notebook out, I've got a pen, I'm taking some notes. I'm like, you know, making sure that it's information I'm going to keep for later. Dot says sometimes doing morning pages helps her to remember what she wants to do that she's written down. That's fantastic. I mean, that's like a, the greatest brain dump ever, right? That you actually get some things out of there that were hidden away, right? Um, I took two workshops this weekend with, as it turns out, who people weren't teachers for me. One teacher gave materials on some history, but no instructions. Because I was with a friend, I still enjoyed myself. That's great. Um, in another art class, I listened to instructions and then just flipped the order. I heard a flip comment from the instructor that I was a distraction. Not good. Yeah. Again, like I don't always think that like teachers are the right teacher for you. I remember going to class that I was so severely disappointed in the teacher, like did like maybe a 15, 20 minute demo. It's like a six hour class. And that was it. Then we just spent the rest of the time working. And to be fair, like it took a long time to do everything. But like, why didn't I come to a half an hour class and then go home? Like, I don't need to complete it in that space. That said, what I realized later at the time I was, um, you know, divorced, living by myself, like, so my time was my own. And what I realized is that there were plenty of people there who were more in like the time of life that I am now. Like you have little kids at home and other responsibilities. So you couldn't just like take the class and go home and do it because you'd get home and your kids would want you and your partner would want you and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you needed to have that time in the class to do it. So for them, that was fantastic that they just had time to sort of play and work. For me, I was desperately unhappy and like I hated that I had paid for that class. So again, I think it's about like what you need versus the time of life that you're in, the place that you're in, all that kind of stuff is so true. And Donna says, this is our community. 100% agree with that. Absolutely. 
Bonnie says, I think now in 2023, forming live community is a major challenge. I'm surprised she hasn't updated the book. Perhaps she has in subsequent books. Yeah, you know, this has, this is the 30th anniversary edition. So it has an updated intro. Um, she does have, she see it says, let's see if I can hold this up. It says preface to the 30th anniversary edition to the artist's way. So it is different than like some of the original stuff. Although, you know, who knows? I would say she's written several books that seem like this sort of in variety. Oh, Carol has an answer to that right away. Um, she has a newish one called Never Too Late to Begin Again, aimed at older people just coming into their creativity. Perfect. And actually, that is such a good point because I think who's the audience aimed at older people just coming into their creativity? That's a very specific audience. So who's the audience for this? Maybe someone who doesn't feel creative or feels that their creativity has been pushed down, right? And also uh, is very comfortable with like ideas of spirituality. Like that's a perfect, that's a category of a person and that's great. And I think that's also important to remember whenever you're doing anything, like, am I the target audience for this? Because sometimes whether it's like you walk into Target and you see a bunch of clothes and you go, Woo, and it's like, well, I'm probably not the target audience for those clothes, right? Um, it's like everything from my childhood has come back now in fashion. It's frightening. Uh, but you know, I think everything you have to think about who the audience is for. Okay. So all of that said, chapter five coming up is, here we go. Chapter five is going to be recovering a sense of possibility. So my personal goal this week is there's two things I really want to do. One, I absolutely 100% want to figure out what I want out of this book, like concretely want to be able to say, this is what I want out of this book so that I can look for it. And then the second thing that I want to do is I want to try my art version of the morning pages and see if those work better for me. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But if I just spend the 12 weeks trying to figure out how to make like morning pages work for me, then I'm going to call that a win. Okay. So I want to thank you so much for being here. As always, this is a wonderful community, whether you're here live or you're watching this on the replay. I do appreciate you and I hope you know that. And I'll see you next week for week five. I always want to hear all your opinions. And I will say one more time, if anybody else, if anybody would like to come on camera, even very briefly, and just sort of chat about their experience with The Artist Way, I'd love to have you. Again, I always think that like the community aspect makes it so much fun. So if you're interested, just, you know, send me an email. Uh, otherwise, I will see you later. Bye.